Hello everyone. Are you a fan of Stranger Things with super creepy demogorgons crawling out of UV portals? You guessed it right, today's composition will be something similar and inspired. But instead of the kids facing them, I decided to bring veteran marines for the job. Alright, let's create. I started with placing the soldier to the left. He will form a pretty nice direction of the artwork as well as a solid frame. I used quick selection and then manually fine tune the mask. With the rough selection, you can press Q to bring up the quick mask. It is pretty handy in fine tuning the edges as you can see both the original and the mask. I used my pen tablet to manually fine tune the edges as it gives the best result for me. I dropped an abundant factory image as the lair of this demon and brought other marines to the action. Here comes the star of our show, Mr. Alienish Demon. Oh, and no surprise, he brought some creepy critter friends. Here goes a jumpy one. By the way, these alien monster PNG images are from Envato Elements. I also got the marine photos from there as well. If you want to get a subscription and access unique images like these, you can try it from the link in the description section. I did a bit of quick alignment with the background and patched the missing pieces. Time to create the haunting portal. I used this pretty interesting dead tree for it. I used quick selection and then manually painted on the layer mask to fine tune the selection. To make it look more disgusting, I added this texture and masked at appropriate places. I occasionally used a smudge tool to draw out the parts of the trees as tendrils and took them off screen. I used some dead ivy PNGs to create some alienish roots coming out from the tree like portal. I used free transforms perspective section to stretch out the bottom of the roots to match the perspective of the scene. Now starts the color grading. I added a quick dark greenish color tone to the background using curves. I clipped similar curves to the marines to add the dark greenish tone. The same goes for the big monster and the small critters. The RGB curve is dragged down from the top right node to add the dark color cast and the curve in the red channel is also dragged down from the top right node to add a greenish hue. I made some minor adjustments to the placement and sizes of the various elements. Then I started adding the shadows and highlights on the left soldiers. I added the curves to darken them up and then I painted on the layer mask with black to reveal the highlights. Now it's time to add drama to the scene with the red light. For that I added a curve as you can see on the left and painted on the layer mask to create the red glowing light coming from the portal. Now it's a matter of patiently creating the highlights based on the light source. 
There is nothing fancy here, I just carefully calculated where the light should fall and painted on the layer mask of a red curves layer. I also started adding some smoke for a volumetric fog effect. This would create some atmospheric effects and make the scene look realistic. I painted some red vines on a layer set to lighten blending mode just to spice up the dark portal and make the branching shapes more distinct. I also added another curves in a pale blue color tone and painted some highlights for the light coming from the opening in the top. I occasionally gave some washes of color in a layer set to soft light blending mode. I created some color variations in the portal by painting with yellow on a layer set to color dodge blending mode. I kept adding the smoke in between the layers to build up the volumetric effect. Here I assumed that some light was bleeding from the other side of the portal and falling on the surroundings. That can help separate the dark elements and make the individual shapes stand out. I spent quite some time on the critters. I darkened them up using curves and then used a curve in the red color to paint the highlights. Here also I carefully calculated the direction of the light and painted them accordingly. Some critters were exact copies, so I tweaked their positions a bit with the puppet warp tool. Then I proceeded to finish the shadows and highlights on the rest. The jumpy one has a little different treatment. First, I used a curve in the pale blue tone to add the highlight from the light coming from the top. Then I used a darkened curve to darken up its bottom portion facing away from the light. Finally, I used a red toned curve layer to add a little bit of highlight from the strong red glow. The shadows on the floor will be crucial to add realism to the scene. First, I painted with black on the layer mask of the red light to take away colors from the shadowy areas. Then I used a darkened curve and painted the shadows in the same place. Corrected some red highlights and shadows on the roots to give a better 3D feel. You can see I kept adding the fog in between the layers to build up the atmospheric effects. There should be a slight red tint on the soldiers as well, so I added them accordingly on the individual marines. Now muzzle flashes were required to turn this into an action scene. I put the gun flashes in linear dodge blending mode and painted some gloom and glow on layers again in linear dodge blending mode. Then I started painting the highlights from the muzzle flash. I used the curves as you can see on the left and painted in appropriate places. 
I also put some smoke along with the flashes and warped them into place. The bright yellow color of the flashes conflicted with the red light coming from the portal. So I added a blue tone on top of them to make them more neutral so that the red light stands out. For the shooting bullets, I drew some streaks with a polygonal lasso tool on a layer set to linear dodge blending mode and added a yellow outer glow and some motion blur. Okay. Now the jumping critter should have the yellow highlight from the gun flash. So I added a curve in the yellowish tone and painted out the highlights. It kinda worked well to make it stand out in the dark background. After adding some extra fog, I added some shine on the metallic parts. I also added some shooting debris and smoke as the bullets hit the ground. Here I used the path blur and the smudge tool to directionally blur out the muzzle flashes to give extra motion. After that, I added some grain and added some color lookup tables in color planning mode. I added a Fuji Riela 500D and a film stock 50. For the Fuji Riela, I reduced its opacity to about 50% and for the film stock 50, I masked it out from the red area. I took a snapshot of everything and added zoom blur from radial blur centering from the portal to convey a sense of action and motion in the scene. But I masked it to show only in the peripheral areas and reduced the opacity to around 75%. I also added a chromatic aberration or fringing effect from the lens corrections filters. I masked it to show only in the peripheral regions as well. I also added some bokeh particles to the skylight area. And here goes the final result. I did some more corrections with the highlights, the bloom effect, the red light on the ground and the fog. Do let me know your thoughts about the artwork in the comments. If you find this video helpful, do like it and share it with your friends. And if you like my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel that would really motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video and till then, enjoy creating.